Good evening and welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm Johnny Voss, along with Ezekiel Elliott's brand new neighbor in Kansas City. Or wait, that's not confirmed. That's not true. Who are you? Where are you coming from, my man? From Kansas City, but your old friend Noah Storzinger. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, you know, I it, it's funny. I I watched the movie Office Space today, which is a movie I've seen maybe a hundred times, but I I saw it in a new light uh, today and. I got to thinking and I was like, now, have you seen the movie Office Space? I have not. I've never seen it. Okay. So most people that have seen it know what I'm talking about. And I thought before I get into, you know, some new bright ideas or I go down some kind of dark and, and kind of weird path, I thought, let's get back to talking sports. It's been a long time. It's been like three weeks since we've talked sports. Most of it on my part, daddy made a lot of promises to nephew Noah about, you know, surprises and guess what? It's just like watching the teams we all love didn't come through uh, this week. So we're back and we want to talk sports and, uh, and, and we want to get back to uh, what we missed in the last three weeks. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, there's a lot, especially with the, the Minnesota twins, um, but I'll let you kick it off. Okay. So uh, first of all, you know, I just got done watching the twins brewers uh, series and I, I had no idea. I, I talked to my good friend Gus in Green Bay, uh, who's a Brewers fan, and he said, you know, oh, that's great. You guys swept us. And I had no idea how bad the Milwaukee Brewers are. Did you know they, they got swept at home by the Oakland Athletics? Well, now, I don't know if you've been following the Athletics recently, but they're, they've won that, seven yeah. straight. Yep. Um, but – Man, that's that team is is interesting because you look at you've got a, a fun team in the Pirates are in first place currently, um, and that team was recently in first place I think prior to them getting swept by the Athletics um, at home at home and right. and that team's got some some interesting pieces but when when you go top to bottom in that lineup um, when I was watching them today because I, I didn't catch the game yesterday but the game today. The only guy I was scared of was Christian Yelich. That whole lineup, top to bottom, I, I felt like I, I, I'm just the NL Central this year. NL Central and AL Central. I was just going to say the Central divisions are just, is, just ridiculous. Trash. I mean, and it, it, it's embarrassing for me. I, I love the Twins, and I, I still think they're a good team. But when you look at us, the fact that we were in first place as a below 500 team yep. just a couple days ago, that's kind of embarrassing. Uh, just, so I, I, I was looking at this and comparing where the twins would be in every other division. And there's only one other division that they wouldn't be more than five games out of first place. The central, okay? right? And, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And so is it just that, you know, the, the central division in both leagues are so bad that, that it's, it's not even worth watching, but like, I thought the brewers, like they've been beaten up on my Cardinals you know, and like the Cardinals are not even a, a a shade of St. Louis baseball right now. And you look at the whole thing and I'm like, oh, wait, they're only five and a half games out or eight games out. It doesn't matter because every team in both both of those divisions are so bad compared not to, you know, the, the, the better teams in Major League Baseball. We're talking all the way across the board. Now, do you think I, I think a, a small part of that might be the change in schedule of major league baseball this year. When you look at, you know, the twins aren't playing the Kansas city Royals. Well, that's just it, yeah. However many times you're not playing the Detroit tigers. We have to play everyone now. Same thing with the other central teams. So you don't get to beat up on your, your division rival, the, the poor division rivals anymore. Now you're playing good teams more than you were. Don't you like that though? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not like it's going to be any different. If, if the twins limp to a, a division title as the, the Tampa Bay series proved, they're not going to compete. You know what I mean? But you would get in, in years past, you'd get that false sense of security because you'd beat up on Kansas city and Detroit most of the year. You know what I mean? The white Sox really, you know, you, oh, we just got to play Cleveland and that's it. And we'll lose. But as long as we beat up on everybody else, doesn't matter, right? But then you get to the playoffs and you get shellacked because it wasn't even the same – wasn't the same sport it didn't seem like. Right. And that's why, I mean, 
it's the same thing like with basketball. I know you play your division teams a little more, but at least you're playing everyone. Um, but I, I do enjoy playing everyone just for the sake of, I, you know, I, I don't really enjoy watching the Kansas City Royals, you know, however many times out of the year. I, I enjoy that. You were I, at the game last night. Well, I was, but that was for Ellie De La Cruz, not, not the Royals, man, who've lost nine straight now. Um <laughs> Let me say, Ellie De La Cruz too. You you got to watch him in person. That guy's a 21 year old beast, and he's gonna he's gonna be raking here in the league soon. So, um, but anyways, I, I enjoy watching the the fact that I got to see the Miami Marlins, or you know, we get to play the the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Cardinals, the Giants, whoever. All these NL teams that you know you you had to wait what every three or four years or, or something oh, yeah. to, to play. Right. Um, it's cool. And I, I do think it gives you a better idea of what your team's going to look like come playoff time. And the, the interesting, I mean, you brought up the, the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, I, I will say that is my favorite right now for winning the world series, not just because they're a good team, but, but for how they play the game, they put so much pressure on you on the base paths with their pitching and their offense. And, and the interesting thing is that the twins have played, the tough teams very well this year, I would say minus the the, the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, that series so, was so trash. Yeah, and and that's where I mean, like you know, we won the season series with the Astros. You won the season series with the Yankees. So that's why it, it's it's weird to look at this team and you just see the the record. Um, there are a lot of games we should have won. Um, a lot of games that well, I think and, and the Twins schedule after all-star break is going to be a lot better than what it's been. Right. I mean, like yeah. you know, Toronto, Tampa Bay, uh, the Yankees in the early part of the season. Uh, it, it's not as bad coming out of break. No. And, and that's why I do think this team now, and we'll talk about the offense here in a second, but I think the, the glaring holes obviously in this team are, part of the offense and, and, and the bullpen is, is the biggest one right now for me. Hold on. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. But- well, can we get back to the twins in a second and can we go further? Because there was something I wanted to ask you specifically. And I, I just love it because a lot of our conversations are very, you just go with the flow and that kind of thing. And, and I like that part of it. Um, but you know, I don't want to harp on something, but you know, you brought up, we brought up Tampa Bay. And how good they are, oh, until they play the Oakland Athletics. And here's my question for you, Noah. I'm thinking about, now you got to work this summer or what? I'm thinking about, let's move to Oakland for the summer and get involved in the reverse boycott or whatever that is. Like, they had 27,000 people there. Wasn't that cool? Like, Okay, and so you have no idea what it was like living through Norm Greed and him moving the North Stars to Dallas, okay, like where he couldn't even go to the Mets Center for a game because people were dumping beers on him. So he could only go to away games, and people were still dumping beers on his head because he was such a – for doing that, okay? So now you see that in Oakland, and like, you know, I, I I feel bad because where were you guys 15 – the last 15 years? Nobody ever go to, you know – to a game there. However, Nevada, I think they did another huge step in getting that team to be, to move. And now you've got this like community coming together and doing the reverse boycott, whichever I never heard of a reverse reverse boycott. And so people come in yellow shirts that just say the word sell. <laughs> they, they're chanting, sell the team. And like what we should have done with Norm Greed way back in the nineties and said, just sell the team to a Minnesota or anybody that wants to keep this team here. And that's what they're doing. And you know what? I want to be a crusader. I've never liked the athletics, but come on. They've gone from Philadelphia to Kansas city to Oakland. They don't need to go to another city. Still keep them in Oakland. And and they have a storied history in Oakland. And, and I mean, just growing up, like, I mean, that, that team has had I got a ball team. on my table signed by Jose Canseco, given to me by my nephew. Ooh, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, it, I don't know. Like, it, it's sad to see. And, I mean, like, you got the whole reverse boycott going on. And then the next day or whatever, Nevada approves the 
I, I can't remember what it was, but it was a large step to getting the A's to move. And at this point, it, it just doesn't seem as if the team's going to sell whatever they're going to move. But I did hear an interesting piece of because of this, Oakland has now become an attractive um, expansion city. Which to me makes no sense if it's no, like because just build the stadium, now. yeah, build the stadium now and keep a team that's got history in Major League Baseball than going with the Oakland Golden Seals. You know what I mean? It, 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 man, it brings me back to St. Louis. The same thing. They lost the Cardinals. They had the Rams, and I, I think I talked about this. Where like the bartender was like. No, we just want the Rams to leave. That way we'll get an expansion team. And I'm like, it's not that easy, okay? Yeah, right. And and there's no way that the, the Coliseum should not have had baseball going on the last 20 years. But they had made no commitment to saying, we, we're going to keep the team here by building a new stadium. So now you're going to build a new stadium for a brand new franchise? Doesn't make any sense. And, and the sad part for me is seeing – I mean, one, like you can just think, I mean, imagine if the Minnesota Twins left. I mean, that's, I can only imagine. That almost came years. down as well. Well, retraction. Do you remember that? Oh, you don't, re- you know that story? I, I they a little have bit, a federal but... judge say you can't do it. They've got contracts with the Metrodome or Minneapolis or whatever. But what I was getting to was the, right. the, the fans are so dedicated in Oakland. I mean, for the most part, I mean, I, I would say, hey, maybe you could have came out to some more games, but the the whole what i remember of oakland baseball was the loud the crazy the right. the the air horns in the stadium in the stands whatever um and that was so cool and i i just imagine a move to las vegas which which I'm, is what I the know, football team did i i know it's i know it's a cool it's an emerging market and and that's good from a business standpoint however the las vegas golden knights just won the nhl stanley cup the other night right did you see the celebration from the fans? Was there fans? shootings? I, 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 they okay. they acted as if they had won a regular season game. Really? There was no dedicated and, and that's why to me Las Vegas is a city, it's a city of tourists. The the amount of people that were there were tourists, and, and I feel bad for the Oakland fans that are gonna lose a franchise to a city that's not going to really care about them. And it's mostly tourists watching the game. Now I have so many things to say on that, on this whole point. Like you almost beat me to to the punch. You're like James, the smart kid in the eighth grade that has already beat me to my next point when I'm giving a lecture anyway. So wasn't it like a slap in the face though? When, when Vegas, they have now, half of the many of the world championships that Johnny Voss has in Minnesota. They have half of them. Okay. Their owner said within six years, we're going to win the world championship. And they did. I've got the Minnesota wild who came into existence and made the Western conference finals. What? 2004, 2003. And maybe won one playoff series after that. And Vegas is in, existence for six years already get it oh and by the way the north stars never won one either now i was at that that stanley cup in 91 by the way my point is seattle kraken weren't they in the the western conference finals against vegas and we've been 20 years so that was like a slap in the face okay that's number one i okay because i got other things i have to talk about vegas in, in a second but your thoughts wasn't that did that not just kick you right where it hurts? Absolutely. And I, I actually was talking to someone at work about this too, is he's a, he, he doesn't enjoy a lot of sports, but he enjoys hockey. And he, he was talking to me. He's like, I, I just, I don't like the, uh, the gold Knights. And I was like, okay, well, what's, what's up with that? And he's like, well, they, they're too, too good, too quick in the sense of they were just rewarding an expansion team. The, the way the expansion draft and everything worked Think about like an expansion team for for the for the NBA. You're not going to see them in the in the finals in three four years most likely. Yeah. With, with how the many Minnesota Timberwolves, 1989. Uh, um, <laughs> um, so that's where it's just like the NHL rewarded 
the franchise the, the new franchises too quickly in my opinion and i don't know if that's it's all money related or whatnot I, I don't know i heard they did did it the right way i mean i i heard that that franchise as far as coaching all the way across the board and it doesn't matter it's still a business so if you win one it really doesn't matter i'm just saying why why is it always in that way like where we have to wait 30 years and we're still not even close than we were when we we got the franchise awarded to us and you got vegas and seattle coming in and by goodness they they're already that good do you think that's drummed up a larger fan interest when you when when fans that have, have not not of the game hear that these new teams probably underdogs as their new teams are already winning championships do you think people are more likely to then tune in? I, I don't know because hockey is a completely different, like the NBA finals I watched, but the Stanley cup, like once the wild are out and maybe it's because I, I didn't grow up playing the game or, but I watched it since I was seven, but I just don't watch the Stanley cup. Like I watch the world series or the, the super bowl or the NBA not just the finals, the playoffs, like all of them, you know? And, and so I, I don't, I don't know what the answer to that on that. Um, do I think that maybe more folks watch the NBA as the heat, as a number eight seed kept winning, kept winning. And Jimmy Butler was going absolute lunatic. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I think every, intelligent person knew Miami did not have a shot against Denver in, in the final. So I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question because hockey is such a different beast than I think all the sports that, that we're accustomed to watching. Sure. Now this is my other Vegas question. So for years, Las Vegas never got granted a professional franchise ever. Okay. And I, I don't know if that's, because of, of sports gambling, if it's because it's such a wild town that no pro athlete could handle playing there and living there because right, no one's from there. So my question is now you see sports betting as a legitimate thing like marijuana, right? And they're talking about putting those into like, even into the stadiums, like putting sports books into the stadiums, right? So you already saw Detroit Lions had a couple guys got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, right? Recently, Indianapolis Colts, the guy that made that really terrible tackle on Delvin Cook in that, you know, the biggest comeback of all time in NFL history. Okay, to me, is that not like counterproductive or is that not a conflict of interest? And what I mean by that is like sports betting is so taboo but to throw it up in the face of these guys who are 22, 23 and going, why wouldn't I make a bet on that? To me, it's like, you know, when I was in college, I got three underage minor consumptions. All right. Not because I was drunk all the time it was because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Boom. But when I, so my parents were convinced that I was an alcoholic for sure, because I got three of them. Right. I come home from college. The first thing they would say when I walk in, Hey John, you want a beer? To me, it's the same thing, man. Like you don't want kids betting on the sport that they're playing or any, any sports at all, but we're going to put it in your face as you're playing that anybody can make a buck betting on you while you're on that field. Your thoughts. That's yeah. I mean, honestly, I had never even thought about that to, to be honest. Like that's a, it's a really interesting point. I, I just like, I, I think to, 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 to see all the people that have been caught doing it. I mean, you have to imagine those aren't the only people doing that. And the fact that it's going to be at a larger scale now, I really am interested to see the repercussions of how, what happens. How could, you not, how could you not have your friend, if you really want to make a bet, why wouldn't you have brother Micah make a bet for you maybe and and, and see where it goes from there? Right, right? Like, I, I don't know I, how that all works. Like I, I, I have yet to, I mean, 
officially place a sports bet in my life. Um, it's also just not legal here in Missouri right now, but, um, so I, I don't know how that's all tracked and everything, but I don't know. Okay. I, I just find it interesting in Vegas. Now, once the taboo city of putting any kind of pro, like I remember my dad always saying they'll never have pro sports there. And now they're on the, on the cusp of having three and they've already got a world championship. I know. And you know what? It kind of sits in my craw just a little bit, just a little bit. So, yeah. um, all right, that that's my whole deal on Vegas. Uh, the Oakland Athletics. I'm becoming a very very quick fan. I'm going to go rub my Jose Canseco ball uh, later on tonight. Uh, but uh, let's move on. What what, yeah. what do you think? Next deal. Well, I want to. I still want to talk some Minnesota Twins um, specifically. I want to talk about your thoughts on Mr. Correa here in the past couple of weeks. What eight game hitting streak right now? Eight game no. hitting streak, walk off homer yesterday, two rounds against the Brewers. Yeah, against Milwaukee. But uh, I, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to say every time I watch him in, in the field, I'm a Carlos Correa fan. Uh, I struggle sometimes. You know, uh, because I know he struggled with with the cheating. Uh, but where I struggled as a Correa fan was at the plate, where you would just expect him to do just a little bit more than what he's doing, right? Um, now he is. Will that be infectious amongst his teammates? I hope so. Um, but as long as he's on the field, man, I want to be a Correa fan. And that's, you mentioned on the field. Is that what you're looking for or not? No, yeah, that's like, I, you you mentioned him being on the field and that's the the one thing that I, I am appreciative so far about this year, knock on wood, is that he's been relatively healthy uh, minus the, the whole foot issue, um, which was not related to his other ankle. Right. Um, prior that to. Planner, to that planner, yeah, okay. Yep. Keep um, yeah. But I will say that, I do think Carlos Correa is a reason why we've lost some games. And I think he's a reason why we're still in the race right now for, for first place. Um, and I will say the, the walk-off home run he hit yesterday with his signature, um, right signature move, yep. <laughs> um, that bat flip was really cold and, uh, I, I really like it. So glad he's on our team still. Um, but let's flip flop to the other star we got in the team um, who returns potentially tomorrow, oh. Byron Buxton. Oh, um, I thought you were talking about someone that already returned, but go ahead. I'm I'll, sorry. I'll get to him later. Um, Byron Buxton potentially coming back from the, uh, the IL here <laughs> tomorrow um, or, or the next couple of days. He was doing a bunch of sprints um, today, I believe, and they said he looked really good. He felt really good. Um, the question is right now with the roster construction, which I, I, I really enjoy right now, someone's got to go down and, you know, garlic went down the other day with, with Gallo coming back. So I, who do you send down or DFA? Don't you think it'll be Julian? I, I, I think Julian's the, the, the answer, however, there's one guy I wish he hits the ball so well, though, man. But man, his defense is it, needs to needs to work a little little bit on that. My pick right now, if I had to, is I, I just think you need to cut bait, uh, Max Kepler. I think it's time. Now that's interesting. L Lavelli Neal had an article not too long ago where he was saying the Twins should just absolutely just exactly what you said and bring Walner up and just let Walner get his, get his, his lumps in and be done with Kepler. And I don't know if you can just flat out cut him, but would anybody be involved in a trade? Like I, I know they, they were rumored to be putting him on the block back at, at the beginning of the season. And I don't think they were, um, impressed with anything that they they had the, the talks were um but at this, at this point, point would it matter though i i just kind of want him out he's hitting a buck 90 
can't get the ball in the air. I, I do enjoy his defense. That's one thing right. I will say. But, man, Walner, w- what good is it storing him at AAA when he could be on the club hitting over a buck 91 yeah. at this point? I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you if you were to flat out just, like, opt them out, you still have to pay him though, right? Because he's under contract and it's, it's a pretty good contract, right? I believe he's been getting paid 7 million this year. Right. Um, and then he's a free agent next year. So. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't think, you know, and I, I hate to be a spoiler there, but I don't think Kepler is going to be the guy that that's going to, you know, I, I got to think that Julian is probably the guy that's um, that that's, going to be on the block. I'm disappointed because I don't think we're going to see Polanco much this year. I I just don't. And that one's tough because he, Polanco is a guy you want in your lineup every day, in my opinion. Yeah, right. Um, But not since he got injured at the end of last year, man, like he's been, he was the most consistent that we've had. And now I'm wondering like, has that finally caught up with him? And are the knees finally going, you know what? You were Mr. Consistent, and now you're Mr. Consistent on the IR. I, yeah. I mean, it's the knees. It's the calf. It's the hamstring. It's it's everything at this point. And, and that, it's sad because, I mean, the, Polanco could be a guy who's, who's no longer on the team next year just with how his contract works. Yeah. Um, and so – the the exciting part is who you've got coming up through the system. I mean, Brooks Lee could easily be be on the team in September. You never know. Right. Um, I'll tell you but, one guy that I, I don't see as it, like a, a near future is Miranda, which I really was high on. But, shoot, I was watching him Saturday night on a Saints game. And the defense, like – but and it's triple A. Like there, I think like then don't they give you like extra steps like the NBA or something like it, it was terrible. It was so I really like his bat, but man, if he can't improve on his defense, I don't I don't know if we're gonna see him. Uh and, and that's the interesting up. thing on this team is I, the rotating DHs is something I kind of enjoy. Now when Buxton comes back, I mean it ain't it's not gonna be that way anymore, but um the we have a lot of guys in our system that feel that are good with the bat, not with the the glove. And that's, that's something that's a little concerning to me. Well, and you, you can't right now because, you know, it's a point that I brought up before and I don't know if everybody agreed with me on this, but I, I still stand by it. If, if you got guys like Ryan or gray or uh, even Pablo Lopez throwing pretty good, innings but gives up that one home run and suddenly you're down two runs and it's two zero is that eventually going to weigh on these pitchers going you know what that's ball game right there there's no way that we're going to get back now the bats have been a little lively or more lively right right but but you know what i'm talking about man especially like when you're in tampa bay where it's like man you gave up a two run shot or you gave up three runs here. And um, well, all we need is a really big hit, but nobody's getting on base. Nobody's. So eventually if it, it essentially, this is going to affect, I think our starting pitching because I don't have a problem, even Lopez, which, you know, I think we really need to have a separate podcast on the arise Lopez trade, but that's years down the road. I, I just, I think that it's going to eventually it's going to hurt these these guys where they're like I can't afford to make one mistake because this this team does not hit the ball or it at least doesn't do it in the clutch. I, I yeah I mean I I think maybe a couple of weeks ago for I mean for sure that Tampa Bay series I mean I remember seeing them get out to a two nothing lead I'm like well that's we don't score against Tampa Bay um, I'm glad we took one of the games at least but um, the the, the bats have started to heat up a little bit and the, the clutch moments have started to come out. So, so I'm a little more um, optimistic on that end, but I will say, yeah, how cool is it to still see we're it's what June 14th and the pitching is still really good. Right. 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 
Besides and the that, bullpen, but well, that and that brings me up to you know when, when we can talk about the arise deal again, um, because there's some things that I wonder about that like with Mally out. If Lopez wasn't in the starting rotation with 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 um, with Ober and with uh, what's his name, Forest Lake guy, uh, Marlin, yes. Would we have been able to get by with with the? You know, I I heard Maeda had a nice had a nice outing in St. Paul. Would we have been able to get by? Now I I like Lopez is going to be with us for a few years, and I think that's a good thing. But man, are we getting? Are are did we get what we were thought we were getting in Lopez, and what we gave up was it too much? I I think. We need to talk about that at the end of the I year. I know, I know, I know. I my my gut reaction right now is it was still an equal trade for both sides. That's that's that is what I we will come back to that clip at the end of the year. Okay, I I know we can because we're gonna be here till eleven o'clock. You know, and the uh, the congressional baseball game for charity is actually on TV right now. Mm -hmm. And I want to be done by the end of it, you know, because I don't care if the Republicans or Democrats win. I can't believe that's on FS and one right now. I didn't know they still do that. So (laughs) well, I didn't know they televised it, but anyway. Okay. So, all right. Uh, I think we covered some things. Oh, wait, one last thing with the twins. Most of the people that I talked to about, Byron Buxton in, in the past, now that we're on the eve of Christmas, right. That he's going to come back and he's going to be the savior. And, uh, most people are starting to see things from how I saw things originally when the season started, like, and, and my point was, okay, so you protected him from the wolves by DHing him still landed on the IR. Okay. It, yeah. That was from getting hit by a pitch. I, I feel like anyone could have – that happens to anyone. Or or do you just think it's all – I know, all, but my, my point is when, when, when we get to guys that – the reason you go to the ballpark, would you not pay money to see Byron Buxton get hit in the ribs, batting, which could happen if he's in center field or DHing. Yeah. Or, and – catching these amazing balls like Kirby and Torrey used to do sometimes Jock Jones and, and making these diving plays. W- would you not rather pay money to see that than a guy coming in every three innings and getting hit in the ribs? Oh, and he's still hurt. I, I, I'm wrong. I still know. I, I, I'm starting to see your point, but I, I'm still of the belief right now that it's better to have him on the field more than I, I understand. I think my opinion would be different if Michael A. Taylor wasn't out in center field currently. And I, I mean, that's my last point. You also hit another home run. The other and, and that's my last point. Hold on. Don't steal the thunder first. So with Byron Buxton, so you're saying that if they would have played him in center field at all this year, he would have missed like 20 games already. Oh yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it isn't. Well, right. Okay. I, I still think his, it is, it is great to have all five tools, but if it, would I rather have him hitting for, let's just say a hundred games or would I have them for both for 50 games? I'd rather have the hitting for hundred. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm still going to say MVP right now of the Minnesota twins is Michael a Taylor. Exactly. Right. Michael has been, I, this is a guy who I think the twins need to look at extending considering he's a free agent next I'm year. wondering about that too. He he has been an iron man out in the field. He doesn't I mean he I mean knock on wood, he's he's healthy every day. He gets out there and the offense, I mean you look at I think it's what 240 average or something. But he's bringing the power, which is 
He never right. have, never has done that very right. much. Um, giving you great defense, um, great situational hitting, and it just seems like a veteran out there. And for to think about, you know, it could have been maybe what Max Kepler out in center field um, if it wasn't Mike Lay Taylor. I so glad we got Michael Taylor. Well, okay. So my question for you because nobody had an answer for me. I think I know what where, but let's say that Buxton were to come back and play center field. Would you put Taylor in left or right? Because if you put him in left, that may take away from what Gallo. I mean, I suppose you could put him in right, but if you put Taylor in in right field, I think that takes away from his ability a little bit, right? So where where would you put him? Do you? Well, that's I question if he would even be an everyday player if he really? that because when you look at it, uh, I love what he's bringing to the table in replacement of Buxton. But when you're taking Gallo out of the lineup, when you're taking Larnick or Kirilov out of the lineup. Well, I'm not sold on Larnick yet. Okay. 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 But, but if you put Taylor in left, that doesn't necessarily mean Gallo is out. You could either DH him or put him at first and same with Kirilov. You know what I mean? So I I I think Michael A. Taylor's got to play. I really do. I think you put him in left field. Um, well, I it's just the, the twins outfield. It's not like it's this expansive mess of, of different dimensions and everything. So left field isn't crazy. And I th- still think he could be really good out in left field. I, I think about, I just think a right. right but is that Gallo? Is him. that more gallows or would you just platoon them between left and right? You know, if you want Gallo and left, put, you know, him in right. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, does Larnick play right field? He does. And I, I mean, I think Larnick would probably see DH more. Gallo could maybe Gallo would probably see DH and right field more. That's the thing like right and left field to me, the only difference is that overhang and how you play off of that overhang. Right. Other than that, I mean, I think you could platoon him. I, I just don't think it's that different, and it's not a huge outfield. So I, I just don't think he would have a problem playing well, either position. It's it's a pretty big what if question, anyways, because I don't I honestly don't see Buxton like, you know, we we try to put a timetable. I don't think we see him in center field this year. I don't. Yeah. It, but that's it's so sad. It, I know. It, okay. It's, I think if, if it does happen, uh, we'll throw a party or something because okay. that's <laughs> gotcha. Um, gotcha. all right. Well, this is going to bring us into our next segment countdowns. So I have asked you to create a list of the top 10 Minnesota twins of all time. Now, now- based on my own experience or opinions or of all time, it could be your opinions, other, you know, if whatever your friends say, whatever okay. this is your list. And I want to compare it with my list. However, my list is not from me. Okay. My list. Have you ever heard of uh, chat GPT before? Is that the guy that rotates tires down at the, uh, no, I, I, I don't no, I don't know. Who you're so chat GPT, um, are you familiar with like AI, artificial intelligence? Yeah, that movie with Will Smith. Yeah, sure. you know, I'm not a big Will Smith guy, but oh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, so, so this program, chat GPT, um, basically what we've done is you just type into it and you say, give me a list of the top 10 Minnesota Twins of all time. And it just, it spits out. It's list according to the artificial intelligence, um, which is a little weird. And this is what we're fighting against, right? Like this is, okay. So this is like a huge test for Johnny and twins fans everywhere. But like, so you have no input on this at all. This is a computer basically spit this out. That's a lot of pressure. Okay. So now I feel actually okay about it because there are a lot of guys on my list that I never saw play. 
Mm-hmm. All right. But they still count in my opinion. And I, you know, I don't know how much time we got, but like I've got narratives on every single guy, why I chose them. So I'm not sure how long this segment is supposed to go, but let's, let's get into it. And I have to say this, I have so many, I have more honorable mentions than I have top 10 guys, but you know, we'll, we'll go with what time we got, got to work with here. And this is, this is something I think we should just do an episode where we just play with chat GPT and the AI and just, and see what happens. Right. I already hate them. I already hate them. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) let's start with, let's start with your list. Go. uh, You want to go from 10 to 10 to one or one to 10. Let's go, let's go 10 to one. Yeah. You, okay. You got? All right. So at number 10 and this, this one, I, I felt really poorly about putting on, but as far as a twins fan, I had to do it. And, and it fit at that, like he made the upper crust cut from the honorable mention. Number 10 to me is Nelson Cruz and did not have him for many years, but, He had a quality about him on the Minnesota Twins team that was much like a guy that I'm going to bring up later in the list where you could be down 10 to 1 and Nelson Cruz came up in the bottom of the ninth and you might want to watch and and sit in your seat and not go, oh, I got to beat traffic because he might go 450 feet on you. And you wanted to see, you wanted to hear the, Mm-hmm. crack of the bat and you wanted to see the ball just go and go, you know what? We're not going to win this game, but man, that was really cool. You know, and now it's fireworks on Friday night at target field. So Nelson is someone I, I, I really hope one day is coaching for the Minnesota twins and in some facet for, for the, the influence he brought on, on the team. I hope he is still involved with the twins at some point throughout his career. Yeah, and I, I, I thought maybe it was a stretch. I mean, one of my honorable mentions was Jim Tomey, and same kind of deal. Except I was at the game when he hit that flagpole, like the longest one. So there, there are things when when you ask me to put together a list as far as guys that made an impact on me watching games and why I watch the games. Guaranteed, I watched the Twins to see Nelson Cruz at bats all the time. So, okay. So, okay. We'll go to number nine. Yep. Uh, this is an odd one, but I had to do it because I, I have very few pictures on uh, the list. Frankie sweet music. Viola is my number nine choice. And I'll tell you why Viola made the list because in the 80 late eighties, it was very rare for a twins pitcher to have the notoriety that that Viola did. And so you would go to very few games, but if you said, well, Viola is pitching tonight, you went to the game because you might see him only scatter two hits, but have 11 strikeouts or whatever. And he just, it it was a different, it, it was the first pitcher that I ever was able to watch as a Minnesota Twins fan. I go, I can't wait to watch him pitch tonight. You know, Mm -hmm. and you would try to go to the dome knowing he was pitching and it would be a lot of people there more than anyone that you've seen, which was rare in the dome years, you know? So that's why, why I got him at number nine. Nice. Uh, Number eight. I don't want him on the team necessarily, but as far as a player, I got to put him on Dan Gladden. Oh, okay. Now, the worst radio guy I've ever heard in my life. And we actually had um, some, well, we had, there was a little conflict when I, when I talked to him last time and we can get into that later, but as far as when we got him, so he was this guy from the giants, but he had like the kind of mullet. He had the long hair coming out of his hair, like the, the batting helmet. He would do these weird things in left field even though he played in Japan, you were like, Oh, we got this guy. Well, the first year he wins a world series with us. And there was a point he wrote a Harley. He likes the kind of ladies I like. And there was a point where Steve Lombardozzi, the second baseman was talking 
garbage in the locker room. No, I don't get enough playing time. I, I should be the starting second baseman every day, which he was. But he apparently he bitched in the clubhouse all the time. Dan Gladden said, you need to shut your mouth. Okay. Nope. He just kept talking, kept talking. Gladden, as the story goes, rode over on his motorcycle. I think Lombardozzi's wife answered the door. He said, got, got to talk to Steve. Punched him out on his own doorstep and walked away and said, and he was never a problem after that. Steve Lombardozzi was never a problem after that. So I got to go with Dan Gladden on number eight. And that that's a, that's a stretch. I know, but. I've never heard that story. That's well, it's interesting. A it's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> and I got another great one about Steve Lombardozzi, who is at the very end of the honorable mentions. I put that one just because he was the, you know, the receiver on a Dan Gladden right hook. But also when the twins won the world series, Lombardozzi said, we are no longer the Minnesota Twinkies. We are the Minnesota twins. And I got a t-shirt that says the Twinkies, but anyways. Okay. I like it. We go to number seven. Yep. Bert be home by 11. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because we all knew who Bert by 11 was by the, his second round, which was at the tail end of his career, but he still won a world series with us. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so growing up, you heard all these things about Rick Blylevin as a twin and what, what crazy stuff he had, even though he gave up the home runs even back then, but what a great pitcher he was then came back, uh, wins a world series with us, becomes a broadcaster. Um, I've met him, several times and is a legitimate, really cool guy. Uh, but he was a great baseball player twice for the twins. And so even though most of his career, I did not see for sure. He makes the top 10. Yeah. All right. This one folks are going to have problems with number six. And if I'm going against AI, it has nothing to do because this is my own personal Johnny Voss experience from 1978 to 2023. So y'all can, you know, number six, AJ Perzinski. Oh, a shocker. Okay. Because what he gave you watching him play, you loved having him on your team. You hated him when he was on another team. You loved having him on. You even knew when he was on your team that he was an asshole. You knew it. And no offense, AJ, like, but you were a dick all the way across the board and you went, I love it. Well, he went a little far. No, I love it though. I still, and then when he was on another team, you go, ah, oh, that EJ Brzezinski, that uh, Yeah. I know what he was doing and I used to like it, but I don't like it now. So, um, if Noah would ever look through the files, the first time I interviewed Joe Maurer was right after the whole, we drafted him to get rid of. And so Brzezinski was gone. Boop Bonzer was in the same interview. Okay. And I totally dissed Joe Maurer at like 19 years old or 20 years old. Like completely like, I don't want to say embarrassed myself, but I was not happy with the AJ Joe Maurer trade. And so I let him know very quickly and I still stand by it. All right. So number five, Tory Hunter. Okay. Tory yeah. Hunter, sure, man. And we have had good luck with outfielders in the center field position, mm -hmm. but Torrey Hunter was such a cool guy as well as an incredible baseball player. I have the utmost respect for him. Torrey Hunter was a guy that I would want to tune in. Oh, they're playing in Anaheim nine 30. I got to get up at six. No, Torrey Hunter's playing and wanted it. So not when he was playing there with the twins, I'm saying anyway. Whatever happened to him in the broadcast booth? You know, he did a few games, and I, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was good. I thought he was good, too, because he quoted Eddie Murphy in uh, Coming to America. What What is that, velvet? You know, <laughs> so I, I don't know. Like, he still has ties to the twins, though, doesn't he? I think he's a special advisor or, or whatever. Uh, so. of, okay. All right. Number four. Rodney Carew. And that's the one I never watched him play like his whole career. Like the, maybe remember a couple games very young when he was at the angels, but 
I got Sports Illustrated when I was five years old. True story. And I remember getting like a Rod Carew Sports Illustrated. He was on the cover. And my dad saying, yeah, that that that's a Twins great right there. And I'm like, he's wearing California stuff. What? And he's like, nope. For years and years and years, he was a stud as a Minnesota twin. Like most people would know him as, as a twin over an angel. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but. Once again, I'm biased because I met him and, and he said some incredible things that I hope as the podcast goes on, I can share because they're just like, they're just like a human being. Like anyways, the fact that he was such a good ball player, that's why he is at number four. I feel bad that I never got to see him play. Mm -hmm. Number three, Harmon Killebrew, same deal. Uh, never saw him play. Um, uh, you know, you, you read the stories about being this kid from Idaho, but he was the guy that it might be a close game. It might be a blowout and you might be on top. You're not going to leave. If you're going to, if there's a chance Harmon Killebrew's coming to the plate, you're not going to leave the, the ballpark. So, um, what he did for the twins after his career as a baseball player stands kind of like with Bly Levin and, uh, and Rod Carew now. Um, but that brings me to number two, Tony O. Uh, Tony Oliva is to me, Mr. Minnesota twins. Hmm. And I never saw him play. Uh, I've met him many, many times. And the stories that I know about him as a player and what he did for the community that he lived in, and, and still did, but then did in his community in Cuba when he was allowed to go back there. But he was an incredible baseball player as well. And so to me, Tony Oliva is Minnesota Twins baseball all the way across the board from the start of his career um, until he's no longer with us. He is Minnesota Twins baseball, period. The fact that he's still doing stuff with the team is so cool. How old is he now? He's in his eighties. I'm sure. And, and he, he, he is never, I, I don't think he's been mean to a, a single person in his life. And I never thought that he was a hall of fame player once again, because I never saw him play. And when I started doing research about his numbers and how if injury did not get in the way, Everybody would know who Tony O is, not just in Minnesota. You know what I mean? Right. Um, number one. So I want to oh. guess your number one. Yeah. Just you know who's point. It. It's got to be number 34, right? Yeah. You knew Kirby that. Puckett. Yeah. Yeah. You knew that. Okay. Um, Kirby Puckett was 1984 was when I realized who this, this kid was, 11 years old. Twins never, growing up, I never had anything to cheer for until Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett was a player that you couldn't define or you couldn't, you didn't even have an answer for because he didn't look the part. He, he, but he just did such amazing things in his career where you just went, I've never seen a Minnesota twin ever do that. And, I don't know if I've seen anyone do that since. And the fact that he just didn't look like a center, a major league center fielder, yeah. but he was so good. And, and he brought me the, the best memories that I have of the twins are Kirby Puckett. And um, this true story. Uh, your mom was dating this guy, this guy from, uh, from her high school and the twins went on a, a road trip out to Anaheim. And that was the whole Joe Necro uh, Emery board. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's way before your time. Sure, yeah. Joe Necro, yeah, gets tossed out of the game for filing down the ball with an Emery board, blah, blah, blah. They come back. They had this incredible trip out West where they beat up on the A's and the Angels. And I said that, that was back in the days, like Channel 9 would go, and the Twins playing should get back into uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul about 223. And, you know, the idiots that could convince their mom, hey, mom, let's go welcome these guys back, right? 
So it was my grandma, my mom, my sister, your mom, and her boyfriend, and myself at 2.30 in the morning in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And the place was packed. Welcome these guys back. Even Joe Necro. We love you. Emery, step of the board. Anyways, <laughs> Herbie Puckett was so tired of signing autographs at 3 in the morning. And my grandma, who she grew up in La Crosse, Wisconsin, she uh, is that Kirby Puckett on the screen right there? Whenever there was a baseball game, and she was usually right. She asked him for his autograph, and he said, Grandma, I'm tired. And then he just wrote it out anyways. And, like, that right there would be even better than anything that – except that he was a great fucking baseball player. And so that's my number one right there. And I talk way too much. I apologize. No, no, that's awesome. I – so I'm trying to count here. I got the list from chat GPT in front of me. Um, there are. Wait, over under. I'm going to say three. Wait. One, two. I'm going to say the over under is three, that they've matched me on three. So do you want like match the number or they've matched just. No, that they that I've at least got three on that list. Well, you've got more than three. I will oh. say that there are four oh. of them that you did not put on your list that Chad GPT put on. Okay, let's go 10 to, 10 to 1. So number 10 is the kitty cat, Jim Cat, Jim Cot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't – he deserves – beyond. he's not even honorable mention. He's like nine and a half. Sure. I, I forgot about him. I, oh, man. Now, number nine, one more that you did not put on there. Ken Herbeck. Nope. He was honorable mention, and I couldn't put him on. You know why? He was so close because hometown guy didn't really work out, I don't think, and he still got results. One of the best defensive first basemen I'd ever seen. He did not make the list for me because he didn't take care of his body, and he could have been a better ball player. And – you know me, I'm a jerk, and that's why I left them off the list. So, and I, I never got to watch him play, but I will say I've I've met him a couple times at, at Target Field. He is a cool guy. Yeah. He's a cool yep. guy. Um, number eight, they got Frank Viola in there. Yes. Yes. Yep. Number seven um, is a guy that I grew up watching as a kid, lefty pitcher. Can you guess? Santana. Johan Santana. I, I know. I, he was in my honorable mention. He was one. He was close to Viola as far as a guy that you go, nope, Santana's pitching tonight. Let's go down yeah, for five bucks and sit in left field. He was close. <laughs> ah, I, I feel bad. Santana. Yeah. Okay. No. That's, you got to. Yep. Now, number six is one that you are not going to enjoy at all. <laughs> Joe Maurer. Joe Mauer. I knew it. And now, no, I, I put him off that. He didn't even make honorable mention. You know, like, that's fine. Okay, but, you got to do it, though. To me, as as now, obviously, I didn't get to watch all these all these people play, but um, I will say growing up, Joe Mauer was my favorite baseball player. Right. Um, now, Joe Mauer was someone that I, I feel like I, – I shouldn't say put Minnesota on the map, but, I mean – the media doesn't talk a lot about Minnesota players. And I feel like Joe Maurer got a lot of, of that media attention, which was cool as a Minnesota kid growing up is we have Joe Maurer. Right. Okay. And Joe had a lot of good years um, growing up. Yeah. I would say not when we hit target field, but, but Joe was someone who you always saw MLB the show on these commercials and everything. And, and that guy got people talking about the Minnesota twins. And that's, that's why I think chat GPT put him on the list. But he he's up there for me. No, I will I will say that, and this is hard for me, but I believe it. I think Joe Maurer deserves to be on the the top ten, and and I'll I'll say this because there was a time when I thought we were seeing something super special. He did hit for like he was the first catcher to hit for for a batting title, and he did it what twice, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, before the bilateral, I thought we had a guy that that was head and shoulders, like top three in the league. And it just didn't turn out that way. But he accomplished a lot 
in his career. And so I think he probably does deserve to be on that list, just not on my fucking list. Okay. But, but I, I'm going to give him credit because he did a lot of cool things. Did you do that head and shoulders reference for the, the commercial that he was in for head and shoulders for men or <laughs> with Troy Palomalu? You remember those? I do remember it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I just remember when he had, we had uh, his kids or whatever. And like, that was at the time when he was at the top of the game. And if you remember, his kids were twins. And yeah. I'm like, Joe shoots mad loads, dude. Like everything he does is fucking, you know, like, <laughs> I know that's not even going to make the cutting room floor. Oh, it might have to now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story. I remember telling it. Okay. All right. So we got number five. Number five. So everyone on this list now <laughs> are, are your picks, not in the same order, but uh, number five is Burt Bly 11. Yes. Totally deserves it. And even got a bum deal. I got to say this. I, the only Minnesota twin I've ever known that mooned me was Burt Blylevin. Um, and I'm sure we've all seen, right. Or heard the, the audio when basically that was the beginning of the end. And if, if you knew that guy, you knew he didn't mean anything by it. It wasn't anything, uh, you know, like, like I say, like a Tom Brenneman or anything like that. It, it was just a, a, a goof, a slip. And, and that was the beginning and the end. And to me, I, I always enjoyed listening to Burp Lilev and I certainly enjoyed Burp Lilev and more than any Joker they got going right now. You know, and like Trevor Plouffe is what he just got off a GQ shoot. And that's, <laughs> that's, he's like the, the eye candy, like the opposite, like, what is what is that? I, oh, I I'm tweeting at him, and I hope he sees that and responds. I can't wait for that. Um, number number four. Okay. Number four, Tony Oliva. Yeah. Uh, I I put him as high as two because, um, just because I know him better than I know any Minnesota Twin. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely top five. Yeah. Uh, number three, Rod Carew. Yep. And yep. number two, uh, I can't, I think you flip flopped them. So number two, they got Kirby Puckett <sighs> and they got the best twin of all time as Harmon Killebrew. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, and, and, and think about that, that's, but now I, I think about your position and there's nobody except for Joe Maurer that that's on that list for you that you've ever watched play. Well, on on Chad GPT's list, I've seen I've seen Johan Santana, and that oh, is right. okay. that is it. That is it. So right, now, the talent. You didn't even see Tory play. No, I saw Tory. I, I'm, he's okay. on your list. So I've, oh, I've that's seen right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah. Well, you got to know mine. Mine were more sentimental than than anything else. I mean, you know, I, I thought about the Herbex. Um, another guy was Roy Smalley because Smalley was a big deal. Uh, when I first started watching baseball in the early eighties, we traded for him and, you know, he had relatives that were the manager, Gene mock and, and uh, he was our best player. And then he went to the Yankees and, you know, you hated him. Then he came back and wins a world series with us, you know, not in the same role that he was when, when I knew him, but Roy Smalley wasn't a bad ball player at all. He he's, I, I can't stand listening to him broadcast games. Uh, you know, and he looks like Jeff Goldblum or whatever, but uh, he wasn't a bad ball player at all. No. And I think uh, I want to say Gladden and Provis talked about it uh, today on the radio broadcast. That's what I was listening to uh, today, which I will say, I know you're not a fan of Gladden. What are your thoughts on Provis? Cause I'm a big Corey Provis fan. I don't, uh, I don't really listen. I, I got serious, you know, in my car. So I don't really listen to twins broadcasting. And one of the reasons he's, I, I'm assuming he's a radio guy. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, he Provis? Does, yeah Provis. He and does, does he does like the fourth, fifth and sixth inning or something? That's or Gladden. Right? Provis does one, one, two, three and seven, eight, nine. I see. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons why was because Dan Gladden, like, you know, before I used to put on PGA golf, if I needed, like if I had insomnia, I really needed to sleep. I put golf on. Now I can't even do that with that merger that I don't even want to talk about. 
But then there was Dan Gladden that I could, you know, just turn that on on the radio, on a transistor radio, put it right by my bed, and I'd fall asleep and never know what happened with the Twins game. Um, just not – I don't understand why – you know what I'm talking about? Any kind of entertainment at all, listening to him. It's, I wouldn't say I have as, as harsh opinions as you do, but I, I've never, I, I'm glad you only hear, hear him for three innings. I'd much rather listen to Corey Provis for yeah. one, two, three, seventy nine. But it, it is just not a lot of like oomph with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just kind of, I don't know. He doesn't like explain. Prairie Home Companion meets Minnesota Twins baseball. Like, it, like what that means, that's an old Minnesota reference, but it's like, I guess he's perfect for some. I mean, I guess if you're, you know, sitting on your porch in Hutchinson, you might want to listen to Dan Gladden on a Sunday afternoon, you know, but I don't know. It's, so I want to, I want to switch gears here. Okay. Um, that was countdowns, um, which was a fun segment. I want to do more of, um, cause I think that was really cool. Um, we got a tweet from, we got a tweet on Twitter sent to us, or we were tagged in, I should say, um, from someone named hoops drive. So hoops drive, if you're listening, thanks for, for tagging us. Um, he has a big thread on Twitter about, I mean, I can't show you all the videos and whatnot, but, um, I want to talk about Jaden McDaniels a little bit. Um, and his defensive prowess and how he was, in my opinion, snubbed from the all-defensive team. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I – are you able to make decisions – like that That comes – those awards come out during the playoffs, correct? I believe so. Okay. Did Jade McDaniels play in the playoffs this year? He did not. Oh, go oh, oh, okay. The playoffs don't. Uh, nah, 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 nah. But is there, does that play into it somewhat? I don't, well, if you're on a winning he team. He was I'm, completely snubbed. He, he was, it was a, a lack of Minnesota uh, Timberwolves respect that the, the league didn't give him. You're thinking. He I, totally I, I fully think, and it's, it's all voted on by sports writers, national sports writers right. who traditionally don't give Minnesota the, the right end of the, the, I agree. Uh, whatever. Um, so I, when you look at his thread that hoops drive has put together and you look at the fact that Jaden would be guarding the best player on every team on a night by night basis. Yeah. And I can show you the stats and the percentages and the values and everything that he has put up here it is insane to me that he did not make an all defensive team. So you think if he would have been on Jamal Murray, we would have won two games from the world champion nuggets instead of one. I think it's very possible. I, I think really? now I, I think having Jaden completely changes the landscape of your defense. Um, now also, I think if we had Nas Reed, we would maybe have, have won. Maybe okay. One them, but. But, okay. Let's go with Jaden for a second though. The end of the year, his contract's up, right? Um, of this year, and the, the next, yeah. the next year, right? Yep. So that's the big question right now: is are the Wolves, who have no money to spend, going to be able to get away with being able to sign Jaden after his contract's up? Because, like I say, they have no money to spend, and he is going to. Well, according to Noah, who loves him so much, even though, you know, whatever. I like him too, but are you going to be willing to pay him the money that he's going to ask for that these knuckleheads get for being good enough to almost make the all-defensive team, but then, but yet I want you to pay me like I'm that. He will get his money and the Wolves will pay him his money. I'll tell you that. The the whole the the way his contract or the way it's structured is he'll be a restricted free agent. We can match any deal that he's getting from another team, and right. we'll, I'm assuming we're going to match that, if not extend him before he hits. But that where's point. that money going to come from? So you you can if it's your rookie that you've drafted, you can sign to an extended point. Um, 
you you will just go over the luxury tax. As, right, as but we, Edwards yeah. is going to get that deal before McDaniel's, right? They'll get it at the same time because they were drafted. Well, Edward, Edwards will be first for sure. You, you'll 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 extend and, Edwards before you extend McDaniel's. Yes, and and so based on what you end up giving Edwards, because in the Glenn Taylor years, it would have been lowballing shit, right? It would he would have lowballed Edwards until Edwards would have gone. You know what? Maybe I don't want to be in Minnesota, and there'd be this tug of war, and then you'd end up paying him billions of dollars. And then you go, well, now what do we do with McDaniel? And that's what I'm worried about with the wolves. And maybe nobody else see, sees this coming or what? I, I don't know. I, I, I just think there's a, there's a, not a lot of scenarios where Jaden is not on this team in two years. Now I just want to quickly talk about the defensive teams that are, that are out there. That were I don't know if you know who's on the all defensive teams. No, go ahead. Read so, it. Drew Hall. This is the first team. Drew Holiday for the Bucks. Marcus Smart from the Celtics. Jaron Jackson Jr. from the Grizzlies. Bam Adebayo, the Heat, and Brooke Lopez from the Miami Miami Bucks or yeah. Milwaukee Bucks. Sorry. Um, I didn't think he was making first team. Second team is where. The guy that made it over him, Derek White from the Celtics. I think Jaden McDaniels is a far better defender than Derek White. Right. And that's where, again, I don't know your thoughts, but I, I just I think he was snubbed mainly for how the voting system works. Um, I, I just I don't know if it should be national writers voting on these things who who don't really get to see the Wolves play all that much and see the impact that Jaden McDaniels has on the on the game. You know, and I, I, I guess I don't watch enough NBA. Like, I, I don't watch enough Celtics games to know the difference between because I don't watch 82 games of Celtics basketball compared to, you know, Wolves basketball. Um, so I I don't know if I have a knee-jerk reaction to that, that question. I know you've been pulling for McDaniels for a long, long time, and I've, I've probably been too harsh on him. I'm just worried about if 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 we will have the ability to be able to sign him at the end of the day. And and that I guess goes with what are you gonna do with towns? Because that's the big that's the big matzo ball right now, right? Like so before we well before we move into the next segment, then I want to say hoops drive on Twitter. Uh, thanks for tagging us in that. Um, if you want to talk further, we'll get you on the podcast because we'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, you're a Minnesota sports fan, um, big Timberwolves fan, so we'd love to talk some Timberwolves. Uh, you can talk to us more about Jay McDaniels, his whole contract situation, all the defensive stats that you put out there. We'd love to hear it. Um, get in contact with us if you're interested. Um, so let's jump into trade proposals again. On the last podcast, um, we talked about the Trailblazers trade. Um, there's one more trade that I want to to bring to you um, and get your opinions on because I know you're not a fan of the New York Knicks, but this trade has been floating out there a little bit um, that I, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are. So this is a three-team trade. This is a, this is a team where – or a trade where uh, Carl Anthony Towns – is actually going to the Boston Celtics. And the Celtics are throwing Jalen Brown yep, I knew to that the New was... York Knicks. Oh, okay. And then the Timberwolves are getting R.J. Barrett, Quentin Grimes, Obi Toppin, and four first-round picks. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm pleased that it wasn't Brown for Towns. Because that's what I've heard in in the last couple of weeks is that the Wolves would do a direct deal with the Celtics for Brown, but you're under the same deal where you're going to have to give him incredible amounts of money and hasn't proven anything, you know, just like I don't know Rudy Gobert. Um, but now that that's interesting though because. 
to me, it's a win-win because you get rid of towns and you get rid of some of that stupid money that you owe them, right? I don't know enough about the players coming back. However, you get, you said four first round picks. Mm Mm-hmm makes up somewhat for the Rudy Gobert deal. Now, the Wolves aren't known for their drafting prowess at all. Not the past couple of years, though. Huh? Well. Edwards, McDaniels. Okay. I like the two guys we got in the okay. – Yeah, the right, draft. right, right. I, I'm, I'm talking in, you know, the grand scheme of things. Yep. You know, where, to me, draft picks were always so tantalizing, you know, and it was like the carrot in front, you know, And yet it was always so disappointing every time that we had even pretty fair picks, you know? And, and so I'm a little schemish on trading for picks. However, we need them because we got no money to spend and we got no draft picks coming up. So that would be a deal that I would, I would be interested. Now I heard towns being shipped to golden state. That one's interesting because I would almost rather – see, I don't know. Because when you look at who the Golden State Warriors are going to offer you, you're getting Jordan Poole for sure, who right. I don't I don't like Jordan Poole very much. Right. I, he, right. He'll give you 31 game, but he, he's stupid, and he'll, he'll drop two points for the next three games, and it's just right. – now you're you're gonna look at probably Jonathan Kaminga coming back as well. Who I I don't mind Kaminga. Um, I'm not sure who else they would throw in there. I don't know how much picks you'd get, but I don't know. Like, would you rather have Jordan Poole and John and Jonathan Kaminga, or would you rather get four first round picks and RJ Barrett from the Knicks? Right. And and RJ is interesting because he's also quite inconsistent um and I, I think a little bit to andrew wiggins um but i'm almost wondering would he fit better on this team than jordan pool well i i don't want to see towns go to golden state just for the pure chance he that golden state that. Gets, gets hot and he gets to win a world championship with andrew wiggins Fuck you. Okay. And I'm sorry. And that one might have to make the edit because I, that would kill me. All right. If I, if I saw that happen now, um, I'm still not, I'm not sold on the fact that towns is gone because as far as I know, Tim Conway is not gone yet. Right. So he's he's still going to have to look at going. I'm the one that gave a King's ransom up for Rudy Gobert and really didn't get a chance to prove that yet, that it was worth it because Towns was such a bit, uh, not didn't play a lot. Okay. So I'm not sold on the fact that he's ready to go. Okay. Towns is gone because he's still going to have to, at least in my eyes, he's Conway's going to have to prove himself to me to know what just what the hell he did by getting Gobert, and oh, right, yeah, absolutely, and I, I think that that that's the interesting thing is, I, I just think that how many years, I feel like every year we hear these Carl Anthony Towns trade rumors, like literally every year for the past maybe since Jimmy Butler came here, um, and it never happens, and you make a good point of like. Conley's got to prove that the Gobert thing could work. Um, and I, I just, I, I think you see a lot of fans out there that want to see him gone or that, that think that we need to make up for, for what we gave up for Rudy Gobert. And to an extent, I understand that, but I do think that they will run it back again this year with virtually a little bit different roster. Um, but I do think Towns is on this team next year. And, Here's the thing. I want to like Carl Anthony Towns. I want if if I want to see some fire from him. I have a rook I have a basketball on that table signed when he was rookie of the year. Okay? And I I see so much promise in Carl Anthony Towns 
And nothing would make me happier than if he would lead my team to an NBA championship or even be relevant. But he's not giving me that that confidence right now. And that's why I think a lot of us want, want him to be gone. I would love him to be the guy, like, not just like, oh, I won the three-point shootout. Good for you, man. Great. You know, win the slam dunk championship next year. And <laughs> that's, that's I want to like, win basketball games. So he, to me, he is, and I'm not, I don't want to compare him to Kevin Love, but you look at Love's skill set and everything and how he had to be a third option on a championship team. And I, I think Towns is, is a second or a third option on a championship team right. and cats and not leading the Timberwolves to a championship. It's going to be, it's, it's Anthony Edwards team at this point. Right. But, but don't you be think that Carl Anthony Towns still thinks he's a number one on, on, on a team, right? I, I, I don't. And I, I, we really? will talk about this for, for time purposes. We, I don't want to get into it, but watch the Pat Bev podcast. Okay. All right. With All right. Anthony Towns because he talks about it. And he, they're very, they it's it's not Carl Anthony Towns in front of the media. You you see a different Carl Anthony Towns, and it, it's very he's actually humble. It was he humble. I uh, that's for you to decide. Wow. But All right. I will watch it tonight. He, okay. he does talk high about his game, and you have to admit, yeah, right. he, has, yeah. he has a great game. It was, well, not from where I'm sitting. Behind the brick wall. Hey, no, not Towns. right now. I'm sorry. It's it's not, man. It's. Did Carl Anthony Towns do anything to get us in? Fine. He only played so many games. But did you think that in the series against Denver, that he was going to do something above and beyond it, kind of like Kirk Cousins? He was going to do something over the top that would help your team win. No, I didn't see it. And that's that's not the Towns that I, I guess I was bamboozled into thinking he was. He, I will, yes, he disappeared in the playoffs for sure. Absolutely. But does that necessarily say he's a bad player? He, he is the best Didn't shooting big man in the game. Didn't say that, but do I think that his ego and his emotions get past him even being not a one or a two, but like the third best player on the floor? Yes, I do. Like, I think he hurts this team more than he helps it at many times. So, all right, we'll we'll get out with it. Yeah, I mean, I I think there is a a maturity aspect to it, and I, I'm curious if you'll see it in the podcast or whatnot. But really, I, I think I really want you to look at how Patrick Beverly talks to him. And when I think of Patrick Beverly, not that I'm putting Pat Bev and Jimmy Butler in the same arena and the same boat, but when I think about the the grinded out basketball that they both play. Right. Right. It's interesting to see how Jimmy Butler talked about him versus Patrick Beverly. So watch it tonight, and we'll we'll discuss it on the next podcast. Okay. Cool. Um, so I want to go over um, this is the final segment here. Um, if I can pull up, I'll pull up the picture here. Um, but this next segment is going to be: Can you guess? Um, we're going to jump back to some twins really quick here because I want you to think about the Minnesota twins rotation currently. Okay. Right? Pablo Bailey, Sonny Gray, okay. Barlin, um, Joe Ryan. Um, can you, I have a tweet that Nick Nelson tweeted out on Twitter, um, of the Minnesota twins rotation of 10 years ago. Okay. So this is 2013. Can you name one person in the 2013? Sidney Ponson. No, not even close. (laughs) (laughs) 2013. Okay. Oh no, I gotta, I gotta think now. Uh, You might not even recognize some of these names. No, I would recognize them. Uh, Nick Blackburn. Close. I I think he stopped in maybe 2012 or 2011. Okay. All right. Uh, Ah. Um, hold on. No, I, Kevin Slowey. Also close. <laughs> Shoot, man. Um, uh, 
No, I can't. I can't. There's, there's two lefties in there. Um, one of one. I'll give you a, a, a hint on on one of them. Played for the Mets for quite a bit. Another one played for the Giants for a little bit. No, and it's not big sexy. That was that was right. That was I know. 2017. I know. Like I know that. Uh, oh, I think I know who you're talking about with the Mets. I think he went to the Tigers after, if I remember. Oh, the gambler. Kenny Rogers? No. no. <laughs> when was Rogers here? <laughs> Not before then. Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm drawing a blank. So, uh, the, the, the Mets one, Mike Pelfrey. <sighs> oh, yeah, the bats in the Pelfrey. Right. Uh, <laughs> Okay. The, oh wait. The, no. Okay. Was there another? When was he? The Yankee. The ex-Yankee. Um, the guy that almost killed himself shoveling snow. Uh, uh, Pavano. Carl Pavano. Ooh. Carl. No, I think that was 2012. Oh, but that was a good one. Yes. Okay. I. The former Giant Kevin Correa. Oh yeah. Yeah. That... He was terrible. All right, all right. <laughs> Do you remember PJ Walters? Vaguely. He threw Not like. Even... Yeah. So that... wait, this is the starting lineup on June. What is it? June. June fourteenth. June fourteenth, twenty thirteen. This is the the rotation. Okay. okay. Uh, the other two. Do you remember Sam Deduno? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. And my favorite one, Scott Diamond. Scott Diamond, right? Yeah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> that's that's not even close to the rotation we got right now, right? I mean, that's it, it's exciting. So Nick Nelson, Twitter, thank you. That was a uh, that wait. Was that fun. was the guy that called in, or like did something with our show, or that was something that I, you pulled off. No, I just, I just found it on Twitter, but okay. Um, that was, that was great because man, that, that speaks volumes right there. It really it, does. It, it, the amount of years that I've been watching the twins and we have had maybe one good pitcher ever. Yeah. Um, now we've got four or five, like it, it's. And I forgot about Kevin North Korea. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> It was that bad, Noah. It really was. And yeah, th- those teams after what 20, 2010 <laughs> was fun when you had Orlando Hudson, JJ Hardy, Jim Tomey, and yeah, Pavano. Well, no, we only had Hardy for one year, and oh, there's the door right there. And then yeah. he went on to like hit thirty three home runs the next year. In Baltimore, like, yeah. Yep, that's. Or was it? No, it was the Brewers that he went because we no, got it was Baltimore. I thought. I thought we got him from Baltimore, or maybe we got him from Milwaukee. I can't remember. You're right. I think no, because he did go to the Brewers, but I thought I gotta look this up now. I know it. Because I thought he was on the same team as remember Chris Davis, not the not the Brewers Chris Davis, but Chris Davis with the Orioles who hit like 52 home runs, and then they were like Hey, let's give him ninety billion dollars. There you go. And he like struck out like nineteen straight times in a row or whatever. I thought he was on the same JJ Hardy team, but you're you're right. So he came from Milwaukee right. to Minnesota, and then we we did we ship him to Baltimore? Did he sign? We we got him in a trade, I thought, and then was it? it it was a one year deal and they were like nope we're not interested and yeah. so he signed with baltimore somewhere else and, and like hit 30 homers with yeah. 80 rbis i say 32 i said yeah i thought yeah 70, I know he hit 30 31 on percent on base percentage slugged almost 500 ops yep. over 800 and you never heard of baltimore chris davis again you mm-hmm. heard of milwaukee chris davis every yeah. once in a while but yeah okay so wow <laughs> do you met what would do you can you guess the last year he played baseball? JJ Hardy? Yeah. 2019. 
2017. Yeah. I thought he would have retired. No, no, he, he hung on. And why wouldn't you? If you had a shortstop who could still play the field and could bat for some power, you know, like a very good utility guy, you know. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's that all I got. Some, yeah, that brings back some some memories, man. Like, uh, did you know who Nick Blackburn was? Yeah, yeah. I watch Nick Blackburn all the time growing up. Okay, I did not know that. Nick was- Blackburn, Scott Baker, Kevin Slowey. Scott uh, Baker. And you know, to- and Scott Erickson made the honorable mention, but oh, really? We'll, we'll mention that a little bit later <laughs> after after 11 o'clock when this show gets a little blue, you know, like that. Uh, <laughs> Um, actually, I want to bring up one more thing before we, we shut things down here. Um, the one thing I forgot, who is our, uh, our, our folk hero on this show? Well, what's your, your definition of folk hero? Who, who's, who's our, who's our guy? I, I, I don't know what that means. Joey fucking Gallo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know what, what that, you know, I was going to say Kevin Garnett, but okay. Yeah. Joey fucking Gallo ripped it up in St. Paul, right? Like you ripped it up. Okay. And that's when, you know, daddy was making all kinds of promises about, I still have a surprise coming for Noah. It, I I put the the trust in the wrong people uh, over the last couple of weeks, but it's coming. Uh, Joey didn't look, great today but uh he got a hit they they it's interesting because he got called out at second on that that blooper that he hit that milwaukee couldn't field because they're a good team right um and Gus. he technically should have gotten a single i believe the run still scored and he got tagged out before he hit second he an RBI for that? he does because the right. run scored before he was out but it looks like they still credited him today with a double. Well, great. That's Which is interesting. How are we going to get a hold of Joey fucking Gallo? What we there's got to be a way, right? I because you know what? I know that they listen to you on the phone. Like I don't say so. I say Joey fucking Gallo. Suddenly it pops up on my on my phone. Yankees might be disappointed. They let one go in Joey Gallo. And like, I, I don't su- subscribe to that page. I don't know how that comes up, but suddenly, you know, people are listening. And so I've got to know, how are we going to get in touch with Joey fucking Gallo? Because it's got to be, it, you know, the baseball season, a long season. We've have 162 games to work with. I think, the the white whale for us in this podcast by the end of the year should be at least like, you know, like him saying fuck off or, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like that we get actual recognition that we're, we want to cheer for you. You know, I, I just, I think we need to hound him at games or we'll figure out who his agent is or um, whoever's listening, man, get us Joey Gallo. Like okay. give up, get, get it to us because like you said, it's the white whale. So, so you're coming up in, in the future in, in another week or what? Next week I'll be okay. up there. And, but the twins are not in town or they are. They're in town on Thursday. So if you want to go to a game on Thursday. Okay. Uh, yeah. And well, so that's a week from, okay. Cause you know, tomorrow T pain is given. Oh, the 40, yeah. No, I heard it's a 45 minute concert after after the game. Is it free then with the tickets? Yes. Okay. And so like, and I saw T-Pain at halftime of the Vikings game last year, I think, but apparently. What's his deal with Minnesota? (laughs) What's that? What's the deal with Minnesota? He just likes playing in Minnesota. He must be getting paid. I, I heard it's going to be now my source is pretty good, but I heard it's like a, a 43 minute concert after, you know, which to me is better than, who do they got? Clay. What's that guy's name? Clay something or other. The Luke, Luke, oh, Luke, Luke Brian, Luke Combs. Yes, Luke. yes. Whatever. Sure. That's a free show. So that's what I'm going to go see tomorrow night. But yeah, I'd go, I'd go next, next Thursday. And to me, I think we should get close to the dugout. 
maybe to get Joey Gallo's attention. I'm all for it. And uh, they got, they're playing the Red Sox. So that'll be an interesting one. Okay. Um, but yes. Uh, so the plan is to, for me to pop up to Minnesota. Um, we will look to do our, we we've done an in-person podcast before. It was just an audio version. Um, but I would like to get a, an audio and video um, in-person podcast for the first time, which will be very special for the show. So um, stay tuned for that because it'll be uh, really exciting. So could we get a guest for that? We could. We I could. mean, we'll, we'll right, figure right. it out. Joey fucking Gallo. We Joey could Gallo, yeah. One. Yeah, I mean, if we were so uh, ambitious, you know, we could, we sure. could do we'll that. We'll invite him to the studio, yeah. Right, so. right. <laughs> okay. All right, well – uh, until then, I look forward to that that way we'd be able to actually, since we got to play a little catch up, you know, since we've been out for three weeks, we could uh, honestly do like a couple in the next, you know, week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Great. Well, uh, man, this is fun. We should do it more often. Uh, for the show to be named later, got Kansas City guy. No stores in here. And I'm Johnny Voss. Thanks for viewing, and we'll see you next time, hopefully from Target Field.